What's up, disc golfers? Matt Dollar here, and I am finally back with part two from round two, aka the final ten holes of the Georgia Flying Disc Festival 2017 edition, uh, presented by Latitude 64. So we'll be starting out on hole number nine. We've played holes one through eight and holes A and B. Hole nine coming in just under 300 feet. Going with a prime plastic justice there. Spent quite a few months trying to beat that disc up and uh, finally got it kind of straight before it hooks hard left. Okay, Mac does a pretty good drive. That's the problem on this hole is you have kind of a low ceiling and so if you do hit on that hill face, ba boink right there like Forrest did, a lot of times they just bounce off and roll down the hill to the right. So you really want to get it all the way up to the top uh, before it lands, but easier said than done. Looks pretty funny on video. All the um, all the discs that hit on that hill are kind of countering right towards the macro black hole basket that we use for macro golf. So Forrest is only a few off the lead coming into this um, into this hole. Forrest has had a really good round so far. No big mistakes. Uh, I believe one bogey and uh, everything else has been birdies and uh, a couple pars. K Max not having a bad round, but man, he has gotten uh, gotten a couple bad breaks. That's for sure. I'm able to convert on my birdie there with the slammer. This is one of the only days I putted with the slammer, and that will carry us on to hole number ten. I'm going with the escape here. Hole ten coming in at 400 feet. Uh, you really want to throw something straight or a little bit of hyzer that has uh, a late turn or late stand up. As you can see, the hill kind of slopes to the left, so once gravity kicks in and your disc starts hyzering out, it's definitely going to skip and slide down that hill. Forrest may have taken a break from throwing the ram for one hole. If you guys did watch the first nine or first ten on this video, this round, whatever you want to call it, uh, Forrest just goes crazy with the ram. If you don't know what the ram is, it's a old school disc from Innova, um, only in DX plastic, it's like a speed six, goes nowhere fast. Snappy and Forrest just pitch up. Kevin's got a long look at it. Wow, he got a lot of hyzer on that one, but he's able to drop it right near the pin. Uh, talking about that momentum that carries you down the left side, that my big skip got me so far that I wasn't even on the green anymore and had to just kind of chip back around the corner. So that'll do it for hole 10, and we'll move on to hole 11, the par 4, 90 degree turn to the right halfway through. I'm going to Emac Truth off the tee. It's a really, really flippy truth. Um, deco die truth and uh, it does have a little late stability but has a lot of turn at the front end for sure snappy Cole going AVR putta I love watching snappy throw AVRs he's just a great thrower of the disc he has a great golf swing and Kate Mac shot looks really good. Might be a little short of getting to that gap. Like I said, this hole's pretty much a 90 degree right turn uh, at the halfway mark. So if you don't make it all the way there off the... Well, never mind. I was going to say if you don't make it all the way to the corner, you can't get up there. But Snappy, just short of the corner, throws an amazing turnover shot, I believe, with a rock. Boy, this is just a thing of beauty. I would say from where Snappy was standing there, you're going to see uh, right, people in the pro field only get up and down maybe 10 to 15% of the time from there. We didn't really catch it on the camera, but Kevin took a nasty little slip there. Kind of worried about him for a second. We had a little bit of rain um, for this whole round. It kind of just spritzed oh. on and off. and. Lula got a little slippery out there. Lots of uh, Georgia clay on these hills. 
So K Mac has a really long look to save Birdie after that crazy second shot. Ooh, -Mac. And that is a grinder right there. Kevin McCoy. That never say die attitude. He's putting with a Nova. <laughs> this is the full replay apparently. So he's got a little bit of elevation to work with here, or to deal with here. Gets it nice and high up there, starts it above the basket, and it just hyzers right in. Great birdie from Kevin McCoy. I'm also able to convert there for the bird. I was just about to say, I think we're going to have a star frame. Snappy just barely misses that putt. Got a little lackadaisical there. We'll move on to the world famous chicken shack hole. And you've got to throw it low and you've got to throw it straight. Anything moving up to down will get the floor. And unless you hit right in the middle, you're not going to slide. And anything moving down to up will hit the ceiling. Also, when it is wet and uh, rainy outside, the chicken shack floor gets really cakey and muddy. Um, the water doesn't come down the middle of the chicken shack, but if you get it on your shoes and then walk through here, everything becomes slick. So K-Mac was already having some problems with the grip on his tennis shoes, and this is just going to make it a little worse. So, that was kind of a weird moment. My putt's been feeling really good, but it was almost like I just, maybe my brain saw the little basket back there, and I putted it right in between the two. So, Forrest will get the only birdie there with the ram, and we'll move on to hole 13, 400 feet downhill in the power line cut. Forrest with a little slip there. Got that chicken shack all over his feet. And looks like I'm practicing some kind of weird whooping, swooping hyzer. Once again, that really flippy truth. See ya. And not enough hyzer. <laughs> oh, man. It looked like I did enough swoop de whoop de action uh, at the start there, but it just rolled on over. K Mac's going to be dialing up a rock. I think he usually goes driver here, maybe, but um, having some problems with the footing, so he's just going to throw a beautiful right. shot right down the middle. Play for position. And Snappy's going to step up with an ABR again. Imagine this one's pretty flippy. Throws it with a... Oh, no. Tough to tell, but the bottom of uh, Snappy's disc lifted up and caught the bottom of the... Or the top of Snappy's disc caught the bottom of the power line as it was lifting and uh, just turned it over. It actually goes down and hits the little macro basket and keeps it from going in the woods, though. Uh, that's going to be a little short on my uh, approach there. Going to have a little bit of chicken downhill scary putt. Snappy looks to have thrown a good upshot there. you got to be very particular with this upshot. Kevin's going to go for the putt. Knowing that he needs a birdie here if he wants to have a chance to win. Speaking of birdies, Forrest is all of a sudden creeping here with birdies on 13 or 11 12 and 13 and I've got to look at par <laughs> I'm gonna miss it just a little bit low with the slammer now K-Mac has some work to do coming back rough hole for the two guys on top and uh, Forrest has taken some strokes from us in these last couple holes Forrest is gonna get back within one or two of the lead there I believe I don't have the stats right in front of me. <laughs> Hole 14, short downhill tunnel shot. Tricky to make anything stick on the uh, dance floor. Forrest just goes tomahawk to make sure he hits the gap. If you don't hit the gap, you're going to get a bogey here. So uh, you just want to get something down near the basket so you can lay up uh, on a flat, nice angle if you're trying to get the three like Forrest is. Looks like I went with that slammer again. Got it over on a little bit, but it does got a lot of late stability, so I believe this is going to come out just below the hole. Everyone else goes a little short left here, so 
Um, this is a tricky little collection area that a lot of people end up having to putt from. A lot of guys will just lay up, but top pro card, you're going to see these guys go for it. A couple good lines there, just a little misdirection of height. Actually, three good lines. And I'll be the only one left with a chance at birdie. Putting with the judge there from that straddle look. And that'll carry us on to hole number 15, 535 feet par 4. Kind of a short par 4. You can see the basket straight up that tunnel there. Uh, most danger is on the tee, on the tee shot. So as long as you get your tee shot into that field anywhere near those two trees, um, you're going to have a very reasonable second shot trying to get your birdie. Forrest is throwing a beautiful shot here. He said that was a shrike that he threw. And Snappy is, oh no, Snappy ripped that one. Catches the branch that hangs out the furthest. Going to kick him left. He was worried he was going to be OB in the creek, but I believe he's going to be just fine. K-Mac throws a gem. That is a beautiful shot. A few years ago, I would have swore that was a wraith, but I heard K-Mac is throwing uh, a little bit more Thunderbirds these days, so... We can only speculate whether that was a Wraith or Thunderbird. Nice. I'm going to go with a Cenus on my upshot there. And k Max going to go with Old Stinky Pinky, his favorite rock. Force has got some pink discs out. Looks like he's got the Slammer here. And exactly like you would want to see from the lead card here in open. It's going to be birdies all around on the slightly easy par 4, hole number 15. And we'll move on to hole 16, short uphill tunnel shot. Beautiful looking right now, or at least in November with the leaves changing. The hook. This hole always plays about 50 maybe even 70 feet further than it says uh, you can see the top of the basket so it really doesn't feel far at all until you throw it and then you realize oh my 250 foot shot just came up 50 feet short on a 220 foot hole sneaky elevation that's what I like to classify it as so all the good looking shots still came up a little bit short Except for Forrest and that slammer. Forrest threw his slammer all the way up there to the pin. That disc is a hog. It's it's really overstable. Um, doesn't glide very much. Forrest just throws with a lot of power. All right, two holes left. We're here at hole 17. Another 550 foot par four. Just the Ooh, watch the knees there, Dollar. Um, Still got that chicken shack on my feet. Catch a little slip trying to throw a thumber. <clears throat> Almost like Forrest tried to be extra safe and not rotate um, over on his thumber. And he had kind of a grip lock problem on the tee pad. Snappy starts his shot a little bit early. Not happy with that one. It did stand up nice and straight. But he just started his line a little bit too far left. k going to go for the big shot here. Oh, and he has diced it. Catches a little bit of lettuce up there, but yeah. he is right in the middle of the fairway with a monster drive. This hole is really, really tough if you don't throw a good tee shot that lands you in the fairway. Um, if you get down past the gap and then get off the fairway, you have a chance. But I'm going to go with a forehand roller. Kind of trying to make it stand up the whole way. I believe that was a felon I threw there. This is the last disc golf video. Uh, you will see me throwing the Latitude 64 and Trilogy Plastic. Uh, and about this time in my game, I was really minimizing my molds. So um, all overhands and uh, a lot of the backhands and forehands were with the fell in this round. I thought after that second shot I might have a look, but end up just having to lay up over there 
And I believe Snappy's going to have to do the same thing. Oh, no, Snappy was going for it for sure. He had a nice little line on that Annie flick. Just catches that tree halfway up. So even K-Max Great Drive is not going to yield him a birdie here on this tough par 4. And more good solid work from Forrest. And we'll head to our last hole. Hole 18, 600 foot par 4. I believe I've got a 3 stroke lead on Forrest at the time. Just throwing a thumber here to make sure I make the Mando. Took that way closer to the Mando than I was thinking. Um, I basically knew if I got a 4 here I was going to win the tournament. So I was just trying to play extra safe. And almost played too yeah. safe. Nice Force responds by saying, hey look Dollar, I'm going to smash this all the way to the top of Boomtown. Forrest likes to claim he's the mayor of Boomtown, but there's a new election going and uh, my vote is for Snappy Cole. Snappy got, I believe, Destroyer in hand. Flippy Destroyer. Kaboom! What a rip. So if you watched last year's video of the Georgia Flying Disc Festival final round, Snappy Cole in our last hole throws a smash up here on this hole. Yeah, there's his replay. Snappy got that epic huck face, and he crushed that one. So that shot actually turned out closer to the normal pin than the huge bomb he threw last year. I think the bomb he threw last year went a little further, but it finished a little further left. Snappy may have hit a tree on that tee shot because he's somehow right in the middle of the fairway still. Forrest is lining up a thumber with a triple X from the top of the hill. Looks like a very nice shot. And we got some zip liners. So if you do the zip line tour at North Georgia Canopy Tours, it's uh, they have a two hour tour and a three hour tour. A three hour tour. Um, but the last zip line for both is this dual zip line going over the pond right here by hole 18. So I'm just going to jump putt the Cenus down there inside 15 feet so I can try to get out of here with a par and a win at my own tournament. We got Kevin McCoy down here. He's going to chip up. Ooh, gives it a good bit there. That would have been a cool uh, cool little so, video to have him cashing that putt with his zip liners in the background. So Forrest makes birdie here on hole 18. It has a killer finish. Um, he picked up birdies on, I want to say, six of the last eight holes to make a hard charge up in the second place. Very good tournament finish for Forrest. Turns out Jason Light was brewing up a really hot round on the uh, second card. So he's going to shoot the same thing that uh, I do that round. And I'll beat Jason by two strokes. Forrest will be tied with Jason for second place. And Martin Young comes in at fourth. Kevin McCoy rounds out the top five. Thank you guys so much for watching. And uh, please check out the United States Mini Disc Golf Championship videos. I'm going to put out the final nine video very shortly here and then I'll be on to 2018 disc golf thank you guys so much for watching